The next time somebody says, where in the New Testament do you find the sacrifice of the Mass? Ask them what they mean by the New Testament. And of course, they'll point to the book, the 27 documents that are forming the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation. But then ask them, if we're really going to follow the New Testament, where does the New Testament ever call itself the New Testament? And the short answer is it doesn't. Nowhere does it. But the New Testament does, in fact, employ that phrase, the New Testament, or New Covenant, and where? Well, as I mentioned, in Luke 22, verses 18 through 20, as well as in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 20, verse 20 and following. And, and what do you find there? This is the chalice. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the New Covenant, the blood of the New Testament. And what does he say? Write this in remembrance of me. No, he doesn't. Well, he says, read this and remember. No, he doesn't say that. He will exegete this and preach that. No, he says, do this. Do what? The Eucharist. And what is the Eucharist? The New Testament, the New Covenant, at least according to the New Testament. <laughs> according to the New Testament, the New Testament is a sacrament long before it ever started to become a document, according to the document. And so, what did they do after the Paschal Mystery? They went out proclaiming the Word, baptizing new believers, and as we read in Acts 2.42, breaking the bread, celebrating the Eucharistic liturgy. Why? Because they were commanded to do this in remembrance, and the this was the New Testament, the New Covenant, and wherever the church spread, and boy did it spread. They were doing this, though they weren't necessarily writing. In fact, over half of the Twelve never contributed a single book to the collection we call the New Testament, not because they were unfaithful or disobedient, but because Christ had not commanded them to write the New Testament, but to do it. Christ never wrote a thing. He never commanded them to write anything. Don't get me wrong. I am more grateful for the New, for the New Testament document now as a Catholic than I was when it was all sola scriptura. But when you subordinate the New Testament document to the Eucharistic sacrament, you don't devalue the sacred scripture. You revalue and reinvigorate it, and you empower that book to illuminate the mystery that it was written to prepare people to celebrate. In fact, within about 10 or 20 years, the New Testament books were, were begun, but they weren't completed until the end of the first century. One of the earliest records that historians can find, where did people, when did people first start be begin calling these books the New Testament? It isn't until the end of the second century. In the second half of the second century are the earliest references to people calling this book the New Testament. Why did they begin calling this book the New Testament? or these books that they were gathering? Well, historians tell us because of the liturgical proximity of those books to the Eucharist. The Eucharist was the new covenant, the New Testament, in the first half of the first century and from there on. But because these were the books that were written by the apostles to be read in preparation for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, and since the Eucharist is the new covenant, then it would be natural to call these books the new covenant because these were the ones that were brought out and read in preparation for the new Passover, the Eucharist, the new covenant. Isn't it ironic that these people who embrace sola scriptura like I once did refer to the New Testament, though the New Testament never calls itself the New Testament, they're just simply echoing our living tradition. How ironic is that? 